Hey everyone, Speed Demon here. Welcome to this episode of Let's Play Coop It. We are going to continue off with our No Campus Challenge, and we have a few objectives for this episode. So, first and foremost, as you can see here, we already have one settlement location planned. I'm going to go ahead and try to plan a few more. Uh, I assume this is a settlement location. Uh, I see a ton of spot for resources, so we could potentially place down like a super nice uh, harbor right here. That could be a really good harbor. So I can consider that one as a good solid option. Um, and then maybe one around here, potentially. And that would be a good start. Um, what we'll do though first is we need to work on getting a couple things going. Um, first, we need to make sure Auckland survives uh, because there's a fair chance that uh, Netherlands will go for a major attack. And the reason I say that is I unfortunately had to reroll a little bit of the, uh, the save here. I had to go back probably about 20 turns because uh, they decided to do like an out of nowhere while I was in a friendship state. Basically, they went for like an all out attack against Auckland and destroyed it, which effectively killed my run. So I went back and basically now that I know that they're doing that, I'm kind of thinking about like plans. So there's a good chance that I was still going to attack, but I kind of have to try to figure out how we're going to plan. So we're going to adapt to that situation and do what we can. The third thing we want to do is work on getting ourselves set up with a bit more presence with our religion. So we are going to try to target getting a couple more holy sites built, at, at least uh, build one more, and then get another one in the north somewhere so we can start spreading a bit more effectively. Uh, it's going to take a little bit of work, but would be a nice thing for us. Uh, I don't really need this market right now. Uh, honestly, this market I can live without. Um, I would say right now, uh, what would be more important than anything else is we need to both expand and we also need to get ourselves into a position where we can get some serious serious cities up and running uh, and then we're actually going to go back and we're going to go into owls and minerva that'll be really really critical for us so since we're now in autocracy that's just going to allow us to get a bit more yields for everything i may take this one off put this one on put that back on and then what we'll do is we will take the settler card. And that's going to be a pretty safe position for us to work with. Do that. Give a little bit of religious yeah. pressure into this area. Quiet. We've met Sejong. Interesting. Okay, so that's another civilization. I think there's still two more to meet, though. So we have a couple more in the region. I'm going to bring you here. Right here this would be a nice little checkpoint for us to heal in as well plus i can also quick purchase some units once i get more gold and that'll be a nice little safety net for us and because i mentioned earlier about that potential war uh, what i might have to do is think on uh, either a military levy and kind of place all the troops in spots that i could defend so I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Um, mercenaries got boosted. And that is the uh, eight, yeah, eight combat units in our military. Basically, I need to bring a bunch of these units over into a position that I could defend. So that way, they really won't have the incentive to attack us. And plus, many of these units, like a heavy chariot, can help kind of defend the area pretty significantly. I'll have the navy, but they'll have the land units here. We could actually potentially go after cities if we need to. We'll actually have some very good, like, very, very good cities that we could attack. So, uh, I'm, I'm cool with that. So, we are six turns away from the next era. I'm going to try not to get any more era score if I can try to avoid it. Um, that'll just make it easier for us to have a better position in the long term. I'm going to go ahead, heal this unit up for a little bit. Bring him back to close to full health. And then we could do some attacks against him. We can see that we can do a bit of damage, but we're fairly weakened right now. Uh, what we're also going to need to do is, while we're at it, uh, we need to kind of think about, you know, what else is available to us. So, uh, let's see here. In the capital, for example, one turn away from getting that settler up and running, we'll make sure we get a settlement here. And then once that settler is done, we'll settle here. And we have a nice little, like, ring of cities that we can set up with. And that'll make it a little easier for us to develop our tempo. Let's go ahead and get another trader up and running. And while we're at it, we're just going to get our first missionary out there. And we get a little bit of gold back, too. Nice. Let's go ahead and actually target this area first. We'll do some attacks there. Uh, 
Ah, okay, so that's not a spot, but this is, though. I think that's even better. Yes. Uh, wow, plus six. Okay, nice. That's very good. Get rid of that. Bring you over here just as a nice little safety mechanism. Just keep them away from harm. And then what we're going to do is actually continue trying to spread our religion. I may consider another city to work the religion into is like that before we potentially have a war. But what we're going to do though is just be able to get a nice boost to our gold, science, and culture output. So I will do that. Uh, it's just going to be a good way for us to get a little bit of just overall benefits while we're kind of taking advantage of a what will eventually be a war that we'll have to wage. There we go. Nice little bit of gold right there, so that's perfect. Uh, how much you want it for nine? And honestly, 32 gold per turn for the next 30 gold or 30 turns is excellent. Uh, that's very, very good. So uh, we got a nice little boost to our gold income. Uh, for just turn by turn and also a nice little just one time bonus as well. So that helps us a lot. Um, this actually that's a fantastic one because if we do have a naval war against uh, against Wilhelmina, uh that is going to be a very very thing very important thing for us to be kind of getting set up for next turn we can get that city up and running. Perfect. <laughs> That works. That that that's actually fine. Uh, I get the iron that I need to make a like a very good uh, knight here. This knight here, you can see here, uh, fifty melee strength. So these cities would get pummeled. So that could be a nice little in for us. Um, get this city up and running. That is another city that will help us. And the good thing too is because we got the city up and running just before this era, uh, we are able to maintain loyalty without any issues. So. It's a very, very nice thing for us. We're going to first focus on that. I mean, just a plus six harbor is... That's a god tier harbor. Because what that means, eventually, once we get some of the other uh, policy cards on, and as well as getting the uh, shipyard and stuff done, uh, the benefits here, that's going to eventually potentially give us, like, plus 12 production, as well as, like, plus 12 gold. So this city will be able to start pumping out some really good units and stuff. So I'm pretty happy with that. That could be quite good, actually. Um, hmm. You know, actually, that that could work. Uh, that that could work. That that very much could work. I'm gonna finish up this first settler here, though. That is gonna be more important. But uh, a garden, especially with like that many coastal tiles uh, because a garden actually provides benefit for coastal tiles uh, that could work this whole area could be pretty significantly amplified so yes uh, that that's something we could do uh, what i would say is going to be really really beneficial for us is probably serfdom uh, trying to get one or two builders up and running like for example right here a builder like a five charge builder right here would be insanely good uh, that's going to provide us a massive massive benefit um, so getting a couple of these up and running, like the production in these places are good, but just getting them improved even further would, would really amplify our position just even more. Uh, and then what we could do is I would say, honestly, go back to this city right here, purchase that, and we'll go ahead and buy that. That way we get a couple more cities up and running. It's just going to help develop our infrastructure a little bit more. Uh, the more we develop our infrastructure, easier it's going to be for us to really kind of get moving along and just have a good position for the long term. Plus, having five charges means we can have five different fishing boats here. That should help us, theoretically. Uh we met a Monitore. Okay. And Christina. Interesting. Okay, so being suzerain of that actually is pretty nice that's actually benefited us pretty significantly cool um i'm gonna go ahead and head all the way over here 
I need to find another place to set up here because uh, that is going to be a problematic spot. I'm going to have to move down south as much as I... Like, I'm going to need to get utility from that settler immediately, otherwise it just loses a lot of its, like, potential. So I'm going to have to set up around that area and kind of just deal with uh, other potential losses. I am actually going to bring this knight over here first. Uh, so, you, uh, honestly, go in the water for now. I'm going to need this knight to kind of go to work here because we can get a level up. Kind of go through a lot of this military onslaught that we're about to deal with here. This is going to be brutal, but honestly, getting a knight here, uh, as much of it's a slowdown on our effort, this is kind of like slowing down the push that Amsterdam is, or the uh, Netherlands is having basically to try to attack us because uh, it's basically blocking them effectively from being able to attack, which actually guarantees our safety for a lot more, a lot more of a... Uh, decent period of time so i'm fine with that we're actually going to bring you back to safety because that is a bad spot i can live with losing the bit of production that's a good tile but the thing is is that uh making the mausoleum here so besides the fact it's going to give us a permanent plus one uh engineer charge for all engineers in the future uh the science faith and culture for all coastal tiles means that's going to directly benefit pingala's position so for example all these coastal tiles here, if we have uh, a solid eight coastal tiles being worked, that's eight, that's eight faith, eight culture, eight science. That's definitely going to bring us a little bit more into the fray. Um, and, and just again, not just that eight, but it's the eight being benefited by another 115% uh, because of Pingala's ability. So it just further amplifies that, which basically brings us like 10, 10 and, uh, That'll still be 8, but that'll be another 10 of each, basically, which is honestly pretty good. Uh, at this stage of the game, honestly, I will happily take an additional plus 10 of culture and science. Good thing is, even with our no campus challenge, while other civs, of course, have campuses, as you can see here, like, that's a very, like, that's a fantastic campus right there. Like, if I were going for a normal, normal game, of course, like, I would be building campuses, that is a normal thing. Like, you know, a campus over here would be pretty solid. Like, that, that's the thing. But this challenge, I'm actually really enjoying. It, it's not a crazy difference. You know, it's not a massive difference for a culture sieve anyways. Uh, it's not a major one. But it is definitely a little different because it kind of have to ch it changes the way you play. Um, if you're enjoying watching this, uh, I am actually going to be also eventually, once I get further along with this series, I'm going to be introducing another challenge series where I'm going to be playing as Unifier Kenshu Wong, and that is going to be the encampment only challenge, where I could capture cities that have others, you know, other districts, and that's okay, but I can only produce encampments, and that is going to be how I develop my military and have to go from there. So it's going to be a challenge, it's going to be tough. Uh, I'm going to have to really think about it. I'm going to have to develop a military quickly and early and utilize those unifier abilities while I can because that is going to be how I really kind of take off as a uh, preeminent military force in that game. So if you want to see that, go ahead, let me know in the comments, and then I'll get started on that fairly soon. There we go. So basically, as you can see here, uh, the commercial hub now generates culture equal to its gold adjacency, and having a harbor in the city provides you with an additional trade route. So basically... It's a big benefit. In terms of this position here with this galley, uh, main main thing I want to be doing is just keeping it kind of in the middle here. It's more of like what I would call a flex piece of unit, where basically I have it available if I need to move it to the right. Like say, for example, all the barbarians here start spawning some uh, naval units. I could also use it like I'm going to be doing here in a moment just to do some scouting. So I don't mind getting attacked here. Not really a big deal. It's not going to really do much of any harm. Uh, however, I can do a very, very nice promotion here. It's Perfect Word Fire. Uh, this is going to be a fantastic one because this will help clear out a lot of this area much faster. So we could see here, for example, if you want to take a look, this is going to be doing a 30 combat strength amount. So not very much damage. But with this at 37, we could see a pretty significant increase in the damage output. So that's going to make this a lot easier for us to be able to properly attack and also have better survivability. We're going to do some more damage against these other units. I am also going to be preparing a few of these other areas, just so that way we're in a good spot. 
Uh, I'm actually going to go ahead over here and I'm going to cancel that movement because the movement system is a little buggy in this game. And then uh, you can actually, you can stay here because they're kind of blocked. So if she declares war against me, then <laughs> then we have a good spot that we could use. Uh, I may even, these two catapults could actually be fantastic for what I need. Um, cost of that would be, well, I already have it levied, so I have to wait. If I can keep them from being lost. Uh, the levy expires in 14 turns, so in about 15, 16 turns, I'll be potentially able to get access to that. Uh, we'll see. We'll have to see. But there's potential. I might actually go ahead and while I'm at it, uh, I might bring a couple of these units over. Because if I could have a unit over here for damage, it might not be a bad thing. Just uh, a unit for damage, cycle it around once it gets weak, and then have a couple units available. So uh, That's going to be more beneficial for me. I would rather look at the gold output that I can get from that. Yep, back up to 938 gold, so not too shabby. Uh, I am going to hold on to the rest of that iron because now... I am in a position where I could potentially even afford in the next turn or two to get myself another potential uh, knight here. So I could use that to bolster our position a little bit more. While I'm at it, I'm going to go ahead and actually buy said knight. And that way I can start bringing them over and get them ready for an attack. There we go. That's our fish, first city that is at 10 population. So not too bad at all so things are looking up for us uh, we are in a very very good spot and i'm actually quite happy with the position as it stands right now we're in a pretty good spot we are doing good damage and we are just going to have to deal with this uh in the next episode so if you enjoyed watching this i would like to ask you to hit that like button comment and subscribe thank you so much for watching speed demon out